In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a website that was designed in WP Bakery into Divi. So throughout this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use Divi, how I set everything up and what I recommend doing when you're taking on a project similar to this. So a few days ago, a client reached out to me and asked me if I could convert their website, which was designed in WP Bakery into Divi because the only option was to go with Elementor. But of course, my client loves Divi and they already purchased the lifetime license. And also throughout all this, I'll be giving you some suggestions on what needs to be done in order for you not to make a lot of mistakes. So first of all, uh, my client here is using GoDaddy. Of course, uh, this is not a hosting account that I would recommend. I would probably go with SiteGround, but the most important thing here is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work with the, what the client wants and what the client has. First thing you want to do is to make sure that you create a staging site, because if you start working on the live website, when things go wrong, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So as you can see here, this is my production site and over here is my staging site. So let me just show you quickly. So take a note here at the URL. So this is the main site. And then over here is my staging site. So this is where I'm going to be designing my site uh, from scratch. So what also uh, my clients uh, requested was I designed this from scratch without any code that I am going to take from WP Bakery. They just want a pure Divi website. If we take a look at uh, the fonts, we can see here that this is Poppins, which is really good but I want to save as much time as possible. So what I went on and did is I went on and installed my child theme called a side crafter. I'm sure uh, most of you have seen this. This is just a child theme, but the most important thing here is to save time. So inside crafter, I have what is known as fluid typography. I don't want to go in and set my font sizes each and every time I'm designing uh, this new site. So I went on and I installed this on my site. So let me just show you quickly where that is. So if I come over here to my dashboard and this is my staging site, by the way, you can see here that SiteCrafter 2 was installed right here. There we go. Moving forward now, I thought to myself, I need to now start working on the main page. So over here on the main page, if I take a look here at uh, this site, for some reason, the slider here is not showing but I have the images that go with that. So the first thing I did was I wanted to create this menu over here. So you can see the logo is all the way right here um, towards the edge. So after I installed Site Crafter, I went straight into my theme builder. And this is where I wanted to change the font. I mean the uh, logo. So if I come over here to my main header, this logo here that I'm going to update is going to update pretty much across the whole website. So as you can see here, all I did is I came in and I made sure that the width of this is going to be 90%. In fact, it's 96%. So I wanted it really to stretch all the way to the edge. So once, I've, once I did that, I came over here and I added my logo. So if I, if I take a look here, I just replaced the SiteCrafter logo with the client's logo here. Now, I haven't gone in and uh, added my menu yet, but this is something I'm going to do uh, in a moment. Once that was done, I went on and I did the footer. So I'm just going to discard and exit. So let's take a look at our footer here. So on the main website, if we scroll all the way down, we can see it's quite, uh, it's quite busy. But I went in quickly and worked on mine and Again, to edit your global footer, you go into the template. And all I did was I replaced my main logo, which is this one here with the client's logo. So now I've added the logo. And then over here, I added all my links. And these are the recent posts as we have them over here. But of course, I'm going to go in and uh, do a bit more uh, tweaking just to make sure that this looks uh, very, very close. I thought to myself, at some point, my client is going to want to uh, see the progress that's happening on the website. And I did also mention to him that uh, you should not log in and do any changes while I'm working on the site. And so we agreed to that. So if we take a look at our site now, I'm just going to open this in a new tab. You're going to notice that we have our landing page here now uh, taking shape. So this is our main area here. I haven't gone in and added the actual font. But what I did was I just used the same uh, template that came in with Site Crafter, and I just made sure that this was centered. And I just changed the color of the button to match the color that we have here on this site. Okay, so 
the next section here was this section. And as you can see here, this is already, you know, like really taking shape. So let's just scroll back so you can see what that section is. Okay, so here we are. All I need to do is to update my fonts because my one here is a bit too bold, as you can see. But we're pretty much very, very close. So you can see here, this is what the client website looks like. And this is what I've just created. Now, there's also one request that my uh, clients mentioned, and that was he wanted his website to be snappy and fast. So what I'm also going to be doing here is to use Flex, Flexbox wherever I can, just to make sure I minimize the use of um, columns throughout the whole design. This section has you know, a bit of animation. It's really unnecessary, to be honest. So I am going to be suggesting that we don't need all that animation stuff. So we are just going to add a link to our module, which is what I've done here. Now, this is a text module, by the way. I did a tutorial showing how you can achieve this using a text module. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. Over here, what I did is I want to go in here and just show you what I did. So as you can see here, this is my text module. So all I did is I typed this title, which is exporters. But the most important thing is to come over here to the background, go to your background image and add your image. Now, once you've done that, you want to come over here now to design spacing and just add 16% uh, on the top and the bottom. And this is how we achieve that. And then finally, I just added this as a link so that it's easier for me to link it. Next, we have uh, our section here, which is pretty much uh, this section here. So let me show you how I would create this from scratch. So back over here now, I'm just going to add a single column to start off with. And then I'm just going to add my blurb module. Selected. Okay. So first things first, I can see there in my design that we need an image here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come over here to image and icon and add my image. So I want to start with uh, this one here. It doesn't really matter which one you start with. Uh, the most important thing to do is to get the uh, layout uh, right. Okay, so for our text here, let's have a look and see what this looks like. So there's going, there's going to be a lot of uh, back and forth here just to make sure that you get your uh, design right. So uh, I'm going to copy this title here like that. And then back, I'm just going to paste my um, text over here. And then I'm also going to need my paragraph text, which is right here. I'm gonna copy that. I know this is going to take a bit long, but of course, I'm getting paid for this job, which is fantastic. So I don't mind doing this as well as showing you guys how I am achieving this. Okay, so now that I've entered my uh, text in here, this won't show. So I'm just going to hit Command Z and come over here to text and paste it in here. Yeah, you see, now that's even better because it, sometimes it copies the CSS from the actual website onto this. So make sure you paste it in the text editor. So now that I have this, the next step now is to come over here to design and we need to center this. So I'm going to go to my text, center all that. And then I'm going to give this a bit of breathing space by coming over here to spacing. Uh, let's start with about 3%. I'm going to do that all around. Yeah, I'm going to show you something uh, really awesome here to save you a lot of time. Okay, so I'm going to save this now because that looks like uh, it's done. So back over here on my row settings, I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. I think I need to do this uh, three times. So I have four of these. So on our design here, we can see that this is going all the way to the end. So we need to make sure we, ad uh, we adjust our row settings. So I'm going to come over here to my design sizing. And I want to make sure that I also activate use custom gutter width. And because I don't have any spaces between uh, these blurbs, I'm going to make sure I set this to one. And then I'm going to come over here now and set this width to 100%. So you also need to do the same over here. Now it's edge to edge. For us to see if this is working, we need to add these background colors here. So I'm just going to add some basic ones here so that we can see where our design is. I'm going to click here in my module settings. I'm all the way down here to my background. And I'm going to start with that as my background color. And that, that's looking great. Let's now add another one here so that we can see that everything is looking great. I'm going to scroll all the way down, go to my background. I think we are very, very close to our design here. 
we may need to go in and add a bit more padding here. So let's go ahead and do that. What I also need to show you is I have quite a lot of pages here to do. So you can see here we have our competitive advantage. So these are quite a lot of pages. So Sidecrafter now helps me because I don't need to go in and set my fonts. And even if I was using a different type of font, uh, with the Sidecrafter child theme, I'll just need to go in and set out and set my font in one area and pretty much that's it. So that is how I can speed up redesigns of websites as well as building websites from scratch using Sidecrafter. Okay, so I'll probably show you uh, how far I've gone with this in probably a part two uh, to show you the final design. But this is my, um, my starting point to redesign this website from WP Bakery to Divi.